Hey guys, welcome back. Brad here. So today I want to talk about five stocks to buy now in April of 2020. And before I jump into that, I want to talk about a screening tool that I use uh, in order to kind of compare different companies, different stocks to each other in terms of how attractive of an investment they are right now. Sort of a way to compare apples to apples. So uh, this screener was introduced to me in the book, The Little Book That Beats the Market by Joel Greenblatt. And Joel, you know, he's a bit of a legend in, uh, in the hedge fund industry. He ran his fund for like 20 years uh, and he was generating f about 40% per year, um, which is insane. They had to shut down the fund at some point just because the amount of money in it got so big that it was hampering the returns that they were able to generate. So they returned that money to investors. But anyway, Joel, is uh, he's really figured out how to distill uh, a couple a couple metrics to create a really effective screener. And the two metrics, one is earnings yield, which is an indication of how cheap a business is. And the other is return on capital, which is a measure of how good the business is. And he really picked that concept up from Warren Buffett. You know, early on Warren Buffett which is what Warren learned from Benjamin Graham. He would try to find cigarette butts that still had a puff left in them, just buy as cheap as possible, buy companies below their liquidation value. And then one thing that Buffett picked up from Charlie Munger uh, as they formed Berkshire Hathaway together was this idea that, well, you know, it's not always the cheapest businesses that make the best investments. Uh, it's a combination of cheap and good because the good businesses, they're, they excel at compounding your capital over time. And it's something the cheap ones don't do. So it's important to have both. Um, so you can go to magicformulainvesting.com. That's where you can look at Joel's screener. Now you'll get results there but you won't be able to see how it breaks down, okay? It's basically uh, a list of companies that are, they're not ranked or anything. You can get 30 or 50 results, and it just shows you the top 30 or 50 results for both earnings yield and return on capital. So it takes the combined score, and it gives you the top 30 or 50, depending on what you select. Now, there's another website that will actually let you see what the earnings yield and the return on capital is for each company. So you can actually break it out and compare companies that don't show up on that top 30 or top 50 results in the Greenblatt screener. So I found that that's really useful, especially if you're looking to invest in companies, bigger companies like uh, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, like a lot of those just aren't going to show up in his screener because they never really get cheap enough to show up in his screener. So if you look at this other website, which is called magicdiligence.com, you can actually look up a company and see, you know, earnings yield, return on capital, current ratio, uh, cash return on invested capital. You can see all these different things. Uh, which makes it easier for you to compare companies that are on your buy list that might not necessarily show up in Joel Greenblatt's screener. So just wanted to introduce that. So now let's dive in to the five stocks to buy now in April 2020. The first one is GraphTech, okay? GraphTech has an earnings yield of 26%. Price to earnings ratio of 2.9% under three, which is really impressive. Uh, and I got this idea from Monish Pabrai. I follow what he's buying and selling every month, every three months. He has to disclose what he's buying and selling. So that's where I got that. Um, and there's a website called Data Roma that you can see what 
super investors are buying and selling. It kind of compiles all of that information there. And if you want to learn more about GraphTech, I'm not going to get into it much here because I want to keep this video short. I've got five companies to, to share. Uh, you can look at Monish Pabrai. He posted an article in Graham and Doddsville, uh, which is an, uh, an online newsletter, I believe published from Columbia Business School. And he does a little write-up about GraphTech and kind of explains why he likes that investment so much. Uh, essentially, it's, it's, the price has been beaten down so much that the downside is very limited. And the upside is, there's an asymmetric upside to downside. And Pabrai loves uh, opportunities like that. Uh, he also talks about it in some of his recent YouTube lectures. So if you check out Monish Pabrai's channel, you can find those. Uh, number two, Uber. Okay. Uber right now is $22.50 a share at the time I'm recording this. You know, I, I think it's probably worth about $35 per share. Um, you know, it, it's taken a big hit, obviously, because people don't want to get in an Uber now. There's a shelter-in-place order. People are staying at home. And investors tend to really react to what's happening now or what's happening in the very near term. And so Uber's taken a big hit because nobody's taking Ubers right now. Um, it's sort of a kind of a, a blinders view rather than looking out three to five years at how Uber's gonna do in the medium and long term. Uh, so I figure it's about 33% off uh, what it's actually worth. And actually, uh, Aswath Damodaran, who's a professor at NYU, valued Uber not that long ago, a few months ago, and he was around thirty-five fifty for the intrinsic value of Uber shares. So it's a good deal now, 33% off. I actually have a limit order placed with my Robinhood account uh, for the next three months at $15 a share. So if at any point over the next three months, Uber gets down to $15, that order will execute and I'll get Uber shares at $15. Uh, if, you're, if you wanna learn more about that, I just made a video called Limit Order Tutorial, how to get a deal on stocks. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, number three, Micron, okay? Micron makes chips. Um, you know, I would set a limit order at around 31 on Micron. I think it's around 41 now. It's it's a little high, but you know, we're, we're in such a volatile market where now is a great time to get greedy and, you know, try to get these companies at, you know, half or less of what they're worth. You know, you can, I, I think we can count on a lot of volatility in the next few months as these unemployment you know, jobs reports are coming out and just smashing all kinds of records. There's just so many people out of work now. And, uh, you know, I think that's really going to impact volatility. I don't, I don't think we're at the bottom. Uh, you know, I don't, I can't say that for sure. I don't have anything to back that up. It's, it's more of a gut feel and just having some sense of human psychology and knowing that, hey, this pandemic, you know, it's, it's going to be going for a while. People are going to be out of work for a while. And it just makes sense to me that we have not seen um, the worst of, you know, what's happening in the stock market. And not even worse, I j just say we haven't seen the lows yet. I actually get excited when it goes down because then I get to buy things at greater discounts to what they're worth. Uh, and Monish Pabrai owns Micron. He's mentioned that he thinks it could be a compounder. So this could be one to hold for the long term rather than, you know, getting in, getting out in three to five years like he does for most of his investments. This could be one to, to hold for the long term and let that money compound over time. Um, 
Number four is Facebook. Uh, right now, Facebook is at around 154 per share. Uh, I like it around 125. I would probably set a limit order at 125. Um, <clears throat> I really like Facebook because Facebook has such an impressive ad product. Like the, the amount of targeting that companies can do for advertisements is astonishing. Like if you really want to scale back your ad budget and get more efficient with those ad dollars, Facebook is perhaps the best solution out there. So I think a lot of big companies are going to be pulling back on this kind of broad advertising spend with TV, you know, radio, where, where you, you don't know who you're hitting really with those. It's kind of a spray and pray approach. Whereas Facebook, you can specify exactly who your adver advertisements are showing up to. So I, I just think Facebook is, is poised to do really well. Maybe not right away, because everybody's going to take a hit in the short term. Um, but Facebook is going to bounce, bounce back hard once, the, once we get this thing turned around in the economy. Uh, so I like Facebook at 125. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Now, within the last year, I know Berkshire Hathaway did a little bit of buying back of their shares. It was probably in the $190 per share for the Berkshire B shares. And uh, we're at 170, 179, 177 right now. So it wouldn't surprise me if Berkshire, if Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger were buying back shares of Berkshire now and retiring some shares, um, which means it's a great time to buy. If they're buying, which we don't know if they're buying, but I think it's a compelling price for them to buy. I think the only reason they wouldn't be buying now is if you know they see, all right, this thing is gonna head south. The markets are gonna head south. You know, we've got a pandemic that might not be under control for another year, year and a half, once we come up with a vaccine. You know, it takes a while to do that. And um, it's possible that there's gonna be some really nice deals crossing their desks where they can buy companies outright with the 120 some billion dollars that they have in cash. So you know, that would be a compelling reason for them not to be buying back their own shares uh, if they, you know, see a lot of potential for great opportunities for them to buy businesses uh, and incorporate those into Berkshire Hathaway. Um, but, you know, Buffett, Buffett is the king of buying bargains in times like this when times are hard. He knows what he's doing. He's the guy to have your money with when times are hard. So, you know, at, at 170, uh, I think, what is it now? One, so I think it's 177 per share. You know, that's a great price. I think it's been down to 150 something in the last couple weeks. You know, I might set a limit order around 150 because, you know, Things are tumultuous. Nothing is is impossible. I think we'll probably see 150 again in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and you know what? If you set a limit order and you don't get it, it's okay, guys. Like this, like I said, this is the time to be greedy uh, when other, when fear is rampant. All right. So um, those are the five: Graphtech, Uber, Micron, Facebook, and Berkshire. I mean, if you had 100K sitting around right now and you put 20,000 into each of these, I think three to five years from now, your portfolio is going to be a beautiful thing. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, it's probably better than I'm not. I think this is probably better advice than it's not advice, but you know, I'm skeptical of financial advisors uh, as I'm skeptical of academia the efficient market hypothesis, you know, all of these things. Uh, Buffett likes to say, you know, the reason that universities don't teach the way that Buffett and Munger invest 
is because there's not enough stuff. There's, there's not enough material. Like it's too simple. You have to actually make things complicated in order to create a whole program, right? To create for, for these grad students and uh, college students. So anyway, enough skepticism. Um, so that's the five I got, guys. Let me know what you're buying right now in the comments. What are you excited about? You know, I've got a few other things on my radar. They're just too expensive at the moment. I like Apple, I like Google, um, I like Microsoft, but they're just way too expensive. Like they, they got run up so much in the last couple of years that they have a ways to come down before they're even worth looking at. Not even worth uh, entertaining a limit order on those yet. But guys, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I'd love if you'd give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. A thumbs down if you didn't. If you didn't, leave me a comment. Let me know why. I can try to improve for you guys. Anyway, have a blessed day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video.